What's up, college football addicts? Now, there's a lot going on out there today. Lots of breaking news on the ACC, so let's talk about it. Today, we're going to do something very different than normal. Today, we're going to do a simple thought exercise, and I'm going to tell you an absolutely epic story, and this is going to be short. I've seen you guys complain about me being long-winded, and I'm challenging you. Whether you love the ACC or you hate the ACC, just hear me out. I'm challenging the likes of Josh Pate, Ross Dellinger, challenging Matt Baker and, and all the other media who are presenting these cases as if this is a close call. Just hear me out. So the thought exercise is this. Imagine you're the judge presiding over the ACC versus the FSU or the ACC versus Clemson cases and try to be objective. Take off your fan hat and put biases aside. Imagine you're the judge and this clear and simple information is presented to you. Number one, the current ACC contract ends in June of 2027. Number two, the 2016 multimedia agreement includes an option to extend the contract beyond its original end date of 2027. ESPN has to opt in to extending that contract. Number three, if ESPN does nothing or opts out, the contract then ends in 2027. Number four, as defined in the contract, this option to extend had to be executed within two years of the launch of the ACC, which is an ESPN media network. Number five, the ACC ESPN media network was launched in 2019, meaning the option to extend became due in 2021 per the agreement. Number six, as this extension was about to expire, ESPN refused to extend. So number seven, instead of extending, ESPN and the ACC commissioner agreed to sign a memo that extended ESPN's option further into the future. Number eight, this memo was not provided to any teams or programs for any type of approval. Number nine, the memo claims to amend the existing multimedia agreement. Number 10, the memo was completed five years after the current grant of rights contract and five years after the current multimedia rights contract or agreement. Number 11, no other media agreements or grant of right contracts have been signed since this happened. And lastly, number 12, per the ACC's membership bylaws, any change to the multimedia agreement requires a two-thirds vote of approval. So in closing, again, I told you shortly, I only have one final question for you to judge. Do you believe that the ACC commissioner violated the conference bylaws by not seeking the required two-thirds vote to amend the multimedia agreement? For those of you who believe that the ACC commissioner violated the bylaws by not getting that required two-thirds votes to amend the multimedia agreement, this would mean that the memo means nothing legally. This would also allow and mean that ESPN's window for an extension has already passed in 2021. This would also mean that the ESPN ACC multimedia agreement ends in 2027 and cannot be extended because the deadline in the contract has already passed. Now, this would mean in order for the ACC to continue in any form, it would have to be completely renewed without Florida State, Clemson, and whoever else wanted to leave. Now, this would also mean that the grant of rights, which services the specific ACC ESPN multimedia agreement, ceases to exist in 2027. There are no further discussions or debate that are needed other than the exit fee settlement. Now, for those of you who believe that the ACC commissioner did not violate those bylaws when he did not get that required two-thirds vote to amend the multimedia agreement, the memo is accepted as an amendment to the multimedia agreement, then ESPN still has to make a choice in 2025. And the other dozen arguments that Florida State and Clemson have against the ACC are still up for debate. Everything I just told you in this video are known and proven facts. That's how simple this case is. But at the end of the day, you be the judge. What do you think?